Welcome back to another Two Brother Productions. Now here we have 145,033 miles well driven in this car. The steering is kind of shaking a little bit. So the bearings. We're changing the bearings. Now we're using a dot four brake fluid here. Some people leave the cap off. Some people don't. It's up to you, your preference. Apparently there's different ways of doing that. Here are the parts. I will have all these linked in the description. Changing the bearings out. As you'll see in later in the video, they're pretty bad. Here are the brakes. They've worked phenomenally. Very good brakes. This hook helps out with the calipers. So I got myself into that, uh, whatever booby trap they have in these brake systems. All right, so the fix of the whole thing was just bleed the system. And it seemed to just put it back to normal. Now, you see the boards underneath the car? That's how we were able to get the car lifted. Apparently, that's just the way that I couldn't really find any other way to put it up there. But that worked out pretty good. Those pieces of wood all the way across, both sides. Now, 21 millimeters is what you use to take the tire off. Once you do that, there's your caliper hook. You're gonna use a 14 millimeter to remove the calipers. Once you have that caliper out of there, there's different ways of spreading this out. You can put a screwdriver in between the brake pads right there, or just hook it up. Then use the brake pad spreader. Now these brake pads, in the last video you guys saw, I basically just had a the rotor was it was pretty messed up it had some grooves in it i just slapped some new pads not a good idea i found out later on the car was wobbling when i hit the brakes 18 millimeter is to remove the the, the caliper support and also for the bearing you're going to use the same 18 millimeters for both of these now this is for the 2020 ford explorer the xlt I'm not sure up to what year it goes. I think maybe 2023 or 24. Now there's a dealer maintenance mode you want to use. So you are going to pull up on the on the parking brake, press the accelerator, and then press the start button. It'll go into the maintenance mode to remove it. You do the opposite. You press down on the emergency brake button and then hit the gas. Press ignite the ignition. Here it is caliper. You're gonna have to have it a couple of times. 18 millimeter once more. This is for the bearing. You have four bolts in the back, that little sensor right there. I didn't touch it, don't mess with it. It looked fine, nothing was wrong with it. So I didn't bother breaking these loose. This was not the easiest thing to do. So I had to use an extension off the jack. At this point you can use some power tools at least to break it loose I use that then got some power tools when you remove the bearing this was not easy to do there's a bit of banging I'll show you guys on the other side what that looks like and yes there was a lot of rust there so you have to grind all that rust out of there to get the new one to fit plus you don't want that rust on the new bearing anyways Okay. Your truck is open. I just trusted. We'll have most of these parts in the description. This spray right here, man. Everybody has their own kind of sprays. This is some kind of copper jelly jam consistency stuff. It's pretty good. I've used it here in my friend's shop before. And uh, since copper base, it's like a jam. The idea is for it to not seize up again. So it's not so difficult. But who knows if I have the vehicle another 140,000 miles. Now right here, this was easy to do. Just slides right in. Not very complicated. Removing, yes, that's complicated. But it's still, it's, it's, um, it's not that bad. Now you put the screws in the back. I did them little by little. Now you wanna bring this back in. Light taps, you don't wanna bang this in there. 
to the brand new part. You want to be gentle with it. Once you're done putting these screws in here, you're really going to want to crank them down. If you have a power tool that'll fit in there, that's great. I had to use a little swivel on there. Same 18 millimeter as the caliper mount supports. But there I was able to use the power tool. And you want to crank this in there pretty good. And there you have it. The bearing is now, as far as this one, it came with new clips. I just swapped them all out. Swap out all those clips. Get that bolt right there. You have one in there. The other one goes in fairly easy. There you have everything looking nice and shiny. So the rain hits it. So I could have probably painted these rotors. I didn't do it, so whatever. It'll stay regular metal. And you crank these down real good. Brake pads, easy to put on. Now by now you must have spread the brake calipers. Slide right over it. And then that's pretty much the job right there. And here we have the passenger front side. That shield got to come off. I didn't get the size of that bolt right there. You'll figure it out when you're there. Not, very, not the easiest bolts to remove from here. But once you get them loose, then you can put some power tools in there. Unless you have power tools, I can do it from the beginning. It's up to you same procedure you're gonna smack it out this one was a little easier than the other one okay driver's side was harder to get to remove but by then we kind of had an idea what we were doing at least for this one now there's still a whole bunch of stuff in the way don't break anything that sensor leave it alone new part put some of that copper jelly in there if i find the, the that can i'll put it in the description i'll put as much of the can in the description for you guys new bearings front and back very difficult to find apparently all the parts for this car now, same procedure put everything right back where it was keep everything close that shield has a couple washers make sure you get those washers in there take your time do it right in there new rotor lovely change out the brake pads along with those clips this just matching them it'll take a couple minutes not a big deal same caliper support 18 millimeter put those jokers back in give it the beans once you have those caliper supports on there, you put your calipers in. Now the brakes did come with these little jelly packets that helps the, the calipers do not stick to the pads. So I put it on there. It's like I do a little jelly pack. You squeeze a little bit on there, smear it on the brake pads, the back side of them, and then the part that goes on the rotor. <laughs> so it's the little shiny part. Put on the back. I'll show you guys. This is the time consuming. There's different types of spreaders. I'll put, I think there's two different types. Put them in the description. There's a little jelly pack. A little bit on one side and the other side. Do this to all four. Once you have that in there, put that caliper on. 14 millimeters. So it's a caliper and then you tighten up that wheel. Now for the rear whole different ballpark 10 millimeters first thing you want to use when you're at the rear 
This is to remove your calipers. That 11 16 that has to be a real narrow one because fitting in that little gap right there, not very easy. So we went through like about four of those to find one that actually fit. Once you get that in there, start loosening it up. Before you remove this, you want to spread this out. So you have to use the little tool just, and uh, the brakes were pretty good back here. Still had some meat on these uh, rear brakes. The rotors are fine, but at this point, I'm just changing everything. It's all brand new. Car runs smooth now. No braking issues whatsoever. 18 millimeters is what you're going to use to remove that caliper support. So just about the same tools front and back. Very simple. Now these getting in there, it's a bit challenging. There's a lot of stuff in the way. A lot of things are going on. Move that around a bit. Found that spot was good. After I loosened it up. Now these rotors came up fairly easy. That was not a very challenging thing to remove. The front ones, yeah. But the back ones, not so much. Once you break these loose, you could use power tools all, all the way through. It's up to you. Depends on what you got in your shop or where you're doing it. I just use a little bit of both. Clearly, I'm inside, I'm inside a, a shop here. This is a bill shop, by the way, on 13th. If you know where that's at, that's where it's at. Once you get that guy out, you want to support that bracket, I mean, that, that caliper again, because now we're going to have nothing to hold it. So those little S hooks helped out a lot. Once the last one comes out, that fell out. Use that S hook. Keep that up there. Now a little, little free release, brake release. Some kind of uh, whatever kind of lubricant you have to release metal from metal. I suggest start doing this before you take all this apart. Get everything to get all softened up by the time you're there, but it comes off fairly easy. And right there, new rotor right back in. Here's your brake pads. Put those in the description. Change all the little clips. Now it's the same as putting it as taking it off. Everything goes right back in there. There's a lot of wires. I've heard stories of people loosening up these wires. The caliper has a whole bunch of wires and hoses connected to it. Be mindful of what's going on there. Alright, make sure uh, to avoid yanking on this in any way. When you're done, make sure everything's in its place. Nothing's loose, nothing's been pulled out. They will most likely cause you a problem. Now this brake job in particular took me three days to do it. I got into that dealer maintenance mode problem where all the lights in the cluster, just everything lit up. I had two guys come in with the OBD scanners car doesn't really say anything's wrong with it eventually one of them said that the brakes have to be calibrated whatever that meant but there was no calibration function in any of these devices for the obd readers eventually it turned out to be that we needed to bleed the brakes so luckily i had a lot of friends where i was at i was able to stay down the street from the shop but it took me three days to figure all this out in the sense of how do i even get my car running again so three days later, you know everybody's looking around online. Eventually, we figure out bleeding, bleeding the brakes. Now, everything. those bleeding the brakes set everything back. That makes no sense whatsoever, but it did do the job. Once we started bleeding the brakes, the brake pad, I mean the brake pedal starts shaking, vibrating. A whole bunch of clicking sounds come on, and then all of a sudden, it knows what it's doing, and it gets back to normal. And I was able to drive back home. So here's all the lights going off. Basically everything says it's not gonna work. The brakes were really spongy. They weren't doing nothing. 
and it wasn't really letting me go anywhere. At that point, I couldn't go down the street. There was no way to stop this car. Some people so say the pump back the brakes, brakes, whatever. No, you have to bleed them. So it's 11 millimeters take some all the way around. To get it off. This is what you're going to use. And you're going to bleed these one by one. Right here, here, this one's tucked in. Give you some light. Make sure to 11. put the caps, the little rubber caps back on these. Yep. It's 11 and millimeters. Then, yeah, you're good to go, man. It all was very hard, other than right, the dealer yeah. maintenance mode. But you bypass that. If it goes into it, whatever, just bleed the brakes. And it'll get the job done. This bleeding system is great. No mess anywhere. All right, so the fix of the whole thing was just bleed the system. And it seemed to just put it back to normal. So, yeah, three days. <laughs> three days later. 